you know, I, I guess like, we'll just, let's just talk about like our experiences with, I, I guess, starting back, like, I mean, it's pretty early on in our lives. Like when we, when we went through that with, with Eric, you know, and, and, and then like what we can take from that, I guess. Um, I don't know, man, it was a trip. So yeah, anyhow, I think back about that stuff. Like how, how come like he wasn't able to get help or who, why weren't any of us able to get, you know, to help him specifically, you know, um, it, it's a weird thing to think about, especially like in punk, you know, because I feel like we're, we don't have those like same, well, I guess there is, a, I guess there are, are a lot of stipulations. I don't know. I guess in our community, I would, I would, I don't want to say punk, but I want to say like in our community, like, I feel like, man, that guy should have just like been able to reach out to us, you know, but again, like, I mean, we were all hanging out with people that were like, on heroin and fucked up like more often than not. And like, I mean, there's been a lot of people that I think have ended up like in, in a, you know, in some way dying from drug use, you know? So, I, I mean, I don't, but, but again, I don't think like, I don't know if that was Eric's objective, like to be fucked up on drugs. I think it, his objective was to end his life. I mean, he, it was strategic for him and that, and that's it. I mean, that could be partially because of the drug use, but it also could be, um, partially because of other things like his, you know, I guess his, like his, his, his life in, in general, or like his DNA, or I don't know, you know, all his environment, the environmental aspects of it, you know? Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure how to, how to look at it. It's a massive topic that I don't think I'm, you know, fully uh, educated on, like at least like speaking about aside from like my personal feelings or, or, or experiences, you know? No, I, I, I think generally speaking, I think now that I work in mental health, I think, you know, the more I work with people and the more I'm more able to work with families and in different capacities at different treatment facilities. I mean, I've worked at a methadone clinic at San Francisco General. I worked uh, in uh, drug prevention in many international schools. That's when I was traveling to like a different country a week. We were doing different education with the young folks and then i've worked in different treatment facilities from doing harm reduction all the way to abstinence space um but there's a lot of shame a lot of stigma and a lot of silence when it comes to mental health issues of which addiction is is part of that right and so i feel that there's a lot of stigma that society puts on people but also the self stigma that people internalize. And I feel that Eric had some of that, the way that, 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 um, and especially coming from like a community where one was straight edge and sort of that's kind of how you projected yourself as someone who was drug free. And then for now, for one to have that problem, um, you know, you can see how someone would not want to get help, you know, and so I feel that there's like two things going on. There's like the big structural mm -hmm. about how people aren't able to get resources for mental health, but also the way in which people internalize mental health as something that's, uh, uh, you know, something's wrong with them. Something is, is fucked up within them, right? As opposed to looking at that those people exist in a society that make people like that. They make us fucking crazy, but we're not crazy because, I mean, it's funny. You remember that institutionalized song by the <laughs> suicidal tendencies? Yeah, yeah. And at one point it's like, you know, we're crazy and we went to your schools. We went to your learning institutional facilities, you know, like we did everything that you asked us to. And if we're crazy, then your fucking institutions are the ones that are crazy because we're just doing what you taught us, how we are brought up in this society. So I feel like Eric had a challenge, not only from what society was pushing, but also from within our community, a lot of shaming of people who do drugs. So I think that a lot of people, you know, experience that and, and, and especially like um, in certain pockets of punk and hardcore. I mean, it, it, it's, it's like, a, it, again, it's like a double, a double stigma, you know, like you're, you're into this thing and you're, and just like in society, like we look at people like, you know, again, like, even, you know, like, even like how we see it with people with mental illness with like, um, how the police, you know, react, um, you know, and like, just d don't have proper education. Like, I mean, I, I think that that's a, that's a huge point that we're now starting to kind of like look at or internalize, 
um, on a on a much larger scale. So so I mean, yeah, it's, it is institutional, and it is it, as far as like cons, you know, like society is concerned, it's, it's a it's a massive thing. But for me, it, it always was kind of strange because I felt like, well, we're part of this community, like we should be able to talk about it. You know, I mean, not that it's the same thing, but I I mean, I, I've toured with 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 people who were like, um, you know, who were not out of the closet yet and they you know they were like afraid to kind of like talk about their sexuality and like dude you're with all of us like that you know you should be able to say whatever you want because i'll admit like man i've been on tour with with some of my bands where like we we feel comfortable and open to talk about anything you know and that's i think that's really important and it's rare unfortunately so i think like i i don't think that eric really ever had that um that platform you know especially mm -hmm right when he needed it like towards the end of his life you know because i, I it, it seems like there was a lot of crazy shit going on in his head that that he struggled with you know and not even just like um yeah not even just with drugs and stuff but like also just like you know being a musician and like being successful and 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 what is acceptable in, in music and stuff so i mean um but those also i think like those kind of ailments also play into like why someone would start using drugs you know trying to deal with um other issues yeah i mean you bring up a good point justin uh and i'd love to hear what other people have to say about this too um but you know it might be easy for some people to come out and talk about their experience to being queer and then punk and being part of the subculture um but for others, it's not because they live that life, they live that experience. And so it's, even though we're part of this subculture, and that's one of the things that I think Martin from Los Crudos was trying to make a point when he did that Beyond the Screams um, documentary and looking at Latinx um, folks within punk rock is that yes, we're all part of this subculture, but even within this subculture, there's difference and difference of experiences. And so, not only is there overt racism within some of our um, cultural practices, but also just we live our bodies <laughs> and we experience certain things that are very different. And so, um, so it's not always that easy to come out and talk about these things. Um, I mean, that's why the Riot Girl movement was so powerful when it came out, you know, because it challenged things and you know, I see the same thing happening, you know, when, when Los Crudos was around and bringing up a lot of those important issues. And um, I mean, there's still a lot of that happening, you know, sure. and, and, and having to like address substance abuse, you know, that's a big, that's a big deal. Because I, I do think and maybe I'm wrong, but I do think it's in some of our DNA to, 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 to become, uh, you know, to, to, to indulge in, 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 in substance abuse or to become an addict, you know? And I think that that's something that like, um, I mean, I don't know. There's two things that puts people at a higher risk for developing a substance use disorder. And that is um, genetic predisposition. That's not the only thing, but if you've had it in your family, you're at a higher risk for then developing it. But more importantly, it's the earlier you start. And I mean, I, I took my first drink at 13 I didn't even like the taste of it, but I liked the way it made me feel. And the earlier you start, um, you're more likely to have a problem when you grow up because that's like ages 15 to 25, as you know, are, is when your brain is exploding, making all those neurochemical connections that, um, you know, the pruning, the myelination, all of this stuff. So if 85 to 90% of addicts, um, have one thing in common, no matter where they're coming from in terms of race, class, gender, positionality. Um, they all started before the age of 18. And so a, a chemically developing brain um, is, is going through a lot of stuff. And when you introduce a substance, when your brain is developing, you, I mean, that's what we know, that's basic stuff. But more importantly, I think that's when you're sort of putting the person that you're going to be for the rest of your life in terms of your social skills, your emotional skills, the ability to build resilience. And so many of us that didn't have that turn to fucking drugs or to punk or sometimes both as a way of coping with whatever society is throwing at us. Right. And so I know that for Eric, he had a very low tolerance in terms of dealing with stress 
And so, you know, those are the tools that he used to cope with life, music and, and drugs. Unfortunately, those things, it's not that drugs are bad. It's just that for some people, they become more than just a habit. They actually become, you become chemically dependent. And when those chemicals are actually toxic to your body, then that becomes a problem, right? And so, you know, that's, it's just unfortunate that, you know, he wasn't able to get the help that he needed. I don't think people saw it as something like a, a health condition. It, it was more like, well, he's just fucking up. And it's more like a moral choice as opposed to like, well, he might have a health condition that maybe he needs treatment for, right? You know, so only about 10% of people who actually want treatment for an addiction are able to get it. Out of those 10%, about 50 to 60% of those will relapse within the first year. So, you know, in terms of treatment in the U.S., we're, we're pretty fucked, you know. Um, we don't really, we have not really figured out ways to, I mean, this last election, it's interesting to see how many states are decriminalizing drugs and trying to decriminalize the, you know, trying to get people treatment, basically, instead of just putting them, housing them in, in prison. Um, but there's that, the choice of, of the war on drugs, which has been so not only criminal, but it's just fucking killed a lot of people because it's not offering people the treatment and the help. And then the other one, it's just this like puritanical that everyone is kind of makes their own choices. Everyone's choices is theirs. And, and, and we don't really look at the whole person of why someone drugs does drugs in the first place. Like so what's going on in their lives, right? And that's kind of what I want, what I do when I work with, with my clients at the place that I work at. I try to just be curious and ask a lot of questions, you know, instead of judging people. The one thing I would say is that with most of the people that I've worked with, it's usually not like the crack or the alcohol or the heroin that's the problem. That's usually the solution to the problem. And so we have to look at what are the things that lead people to that. And that's usually a lot of things that actually go back into their early childhood experiences, like adverse experiences, whether it be traumatic events, whether it be certain parental conditions or certain environments. So it, it's really complicated to, to sort of um, look at the whole person um, because when we think about addiction, we think about the individual. We don't look at the choices and the context in which those addictions um, occur, you know, and the way I look at addiction is that it's, it's really f woven into the larger social fabric of society. It's not like addiction is carried like a tumor. It's, it's actually a lot, a lot bigger.